The following is a Shaw Public Affairs presentation. Constituency Report is produced as a public service by members of the BC Legislature through the facilities of Shaw TV. Hello and welcome to Constituency Report here on Shaw. I'm your host, Tracy Palazzari. Joining me here in the studio today is Naomi Yamamoto. She is MLA for North Vancouver Lonsdale as well as our Minister of Advanced Education. Welcome. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, how are you doing today? Fine, thank you. Good. Well, of course, this is a new portfolio for you. Are you looking forward to this new challenge? I'm thrilled. I'm just thrilled. I, um, I, Post-secondary education has been uh, important for my family. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, what I've learned from my, you know, really few months on the job, mm -hmm. everybody's got a special journey on how to get there mm -hmm. and complete their post-secondary education. And um, I'm going around collecting stories, and uh, my dad's story is, is an incredible one. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's um, made me appreciate the value of post-secondary education a mm -hmm. lot more. Yeah. What is your dad's story? Well, you know, he was uh, born in, in uh, Vancouver mm -hmm. in 1927, and when he was 14, because of the war, mm -hmm. he was asked, well, not just he, but about 20,000 Japanese Canadians mm -hmm. were asked to, to leave the Lower Mainland and put into internment camps. So mm -hmm. at 14, he was taken out of high school and wasn't able to complete it. Wow. So he actually completed high school through correspondence, mm -hmm. and then he, he actually completed... Um, a part of his um, university through correspondence, but and 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 while he had three children mm -hmm. and a wife, um, oh. completed his PhD in 1967. Oh, amazing! So yeah, a lot of struggles, but it makes yeah. you appreciate the um, the education that you get. Mm -hmm. And your dad's story will actually be featured in a, a book called Vancouver Kids. Is that right? Yeah, I went to the book launch mm -hmm. uh, a couple weeks ago. The author is Leslie McKnight, mm -hmm. and the book is called Vancouver Kids. And what it is, what she did was, she's telling the history of Vancouver through the stories of children. Mm -hmm. And my dad's story is, uh, is one of the stories. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah. Great. Well, uh, through that, we certainly understand uh, your focus on post-secondary mm -hmm. uh, education, why it's so important to you. So in this role, do you get a chance to tour around the province and check out the diversity of uh, institutions around BC? That's actually one of the first things that I did when mm -hmm. I was appointed um, minister. Okay. We um, actually took a trip to the northern part of the province mm -hmm. and visited uh, Terrace and uh, it's Northwest Community College up in Terrace. Mm -hmm. uh, we visited um, Dawson Creek, um, Fort St. John, Prince mm -hmm. George. Mm -hmm. And you know, the stories, um, the student stories there are um, quite incredible. They're life-changing stories. Mm -hmm. You know, I met a young woman, her name is Paula, mm -hmm. and uh, she is um, a First Nations student mm -hmm. and uh, deaf. Oh, wow. And she was studying uh, art mm -hmm. at the Frida Deesing School of Art in uh, Terrace at the Northwest Community College mm -hmm. with an, um, a sign language interpreter. And she was able to express her creativity um, through um, this program. Mm -hmm. It was it's quite incredible. Um, you know, a lot of First Nations students, and mostly First Nations students, representing quite a few different um, uh, communities. Mm -hmm. And um, they had three First Nations instructors. Mm -hmm. It's one of a kind um, mm -hmm. class or program in Canada. Mm -hmm. And what's really, really interesting is that through their art, they're able to explore their culture, mm -hmm. but they're also um, uh, taught how to commercialize mm -hmm. their work. So they've taken it one step further and it's actually quite a good program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds like it. Real practical applications mm -hmm. there. And we do have a photo to take a look at from uh, your visit to Northwest Community College, a photo of Paula. And is that the best aspect when you tour around getting to meet these students and getting to chat with them and hearing what they think is important mm -hmm. in their education? Actually, that's probably one of the most important things that I can do. Mm -hmm. First of all, as a new minister for advanced education, is really listen. Mm -hmm. Listen to the people that we're trying to serve. So listen to the people that um, are, are in our systems, mm -hmm. um, finding out how we can better support them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I hear some great stories. I, I met a young fellow, uh, his name is Gabe, mm -hmm. in, where was it now, Kamloops, at right. the Thompson Rivers University. Oh, He's taking great. a trades program. Yes. and. Mm -hmm. You know, he was working up north somewhere and decided that, you know, being a general laborer just wasn't cutting it. Mm. 
uh, and decided that he would learn some skills. And one of the programs that we have at Thompson Rivers University is this heavy op equipment operator mm -hmm. um, uh, program, and they use simulators. Oh, wow. So he figures after six weeks or maybe eight weeks, he'll have his um, the training and the uh, certificate to go back up north and mm -hmm. actually get a, a well-paying job that um, has quite a future for him. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, it's wonderful, those stories that you mm -hmm. hear. Mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, specific priorities for universities and colleges in BC in the next little while? You know, I think one thing that we, we it's really obvious to me right now is that everything's changing. Mm -hmm. uh, technology's changing. And it's gonna be a huge challenge for us. Uh, by 2019, mm -hmm. there's going to be about a million new jobs, or not new jobs, but million job openings okay. that we're going to have to fill. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, some of those jobs are jobs that we haven't even thought of yet. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to make sure that um, those students that we're putting through the post-secondary education have the skills mm -hmm. and the ability to be creative and do those things that um, will um, help them succeed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, the other interesting um, thing to note is those million jobs, mm -hmm. three-quarters of them will require post-secondary education or trades training. Mm -hmm. So that's very important that we get on top of it right mm -hmm. now. Absolutely. Well, uh, turning to the North Shore, mm -hmm. uh, you attended a, a recent announcement, very significant for the North Shore, Lionsgate Hospital, a new uh, mental health facility mm -hmm. and addictions uh, facility as well. Tell us a bit about this. Oh, this is a long time coming. Mm -hmm. We are so happy that on the North Shore now we'll have a new mental health facility. Mm -hmm. It's about um, a $62 million investment wow. and uh, the um, foundation, the Lionsgate Hospital Foundation is um, actually raising uh, 24 million dollars of that. Wow, good for that them. is wonderful yeah. and the balance of the um, funds will come from the government. Mm -hmm. The um, current facility is a very very old decaying building. It was built in 1929. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look much different I'm sure from what it used to look like mm -hmm. and uh, you know the I think it's by 2013 we'll have a new facility that will also include the um, paramedics, oh, right, uh, right. an ambulance station mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the bottom floor, mm -hmm. and the building will be, you know, safer and secure, not just for the patients, but for the staff as well. Right, and also uh, the UBC Faculty of Medicine will have a bit of space oh, there yes, as well. Yes, that's mm -hmm. right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've got some de dedicated space for mm -hmm. the UBC uh, Medical um, School mm -hmm. for their uh, students so that they actually have an ability to um, have clinical placements mm -hmm. and training in a facility. And, you know, that actually adds to, first of all, the opportunities for our students, mm -hmm. but it also raises the bar in terms of um, the, um, the, the staff we have at uh, at the facility as well. Mm -hmm. Great news. Another very positive announcement, uh, more than 30 groups uh, in your area have received gaming grant funding recently and these organizations really offer a wide array and diversity of services to the community, don't they? You know, I looked at the list mm -hmm. and there were a lot of parent advisory committees on there and that's great. They mm -hmm. do such good work. Um, I saw that North Shore Neighborhood House received funding, and I'm a former board member, and I know all the great things that North Shore Neighborhood House does, yeah. North Shore Family Resources. Mm -hmm. There are some great community um, organizations that have received funding, and, you know, we get a good bang for our buck. Mm -hmm. these, these are um, services and programs that are offered directly at the community level right. and really address the needs of some of our vulnerable mm -hmm. um, community members. Mm -hmm. Great work that they're doing. Uh, chatting a bit about the economy now, we know we have a referendum coming up on the harmonized sales tax. Why was a mail-in ballot the right decision on that one? Well, I think the, the, the one huge advantage of a mail-in ballot is that it's a lot cheaper mm -hmm. and you know I can't remember the um, the cost of a walk-in but it was I think 30 or 40 million dollars mm -hmm. it's um, 12 million to do a it's which is still a lot of money mm -hmm. but you know it's a lot cheaper mm -hmm. and um, I think that that's a great reason to go to a mail-in ballot mm -hmm, absolutely um, what are some of those benefits of the HST that you're sharing with people and uh, businesses in your area well, I used to be a small business owner, mm -hmm. and in fact, I had a small business for um, just over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that the HST um, is 
wonderful tax when you, from a business perspective. Mm -hmm. What it does, it allows businesses to um, receive tax input credits, which really may not mean a lot to people, <laughs> but ultimately what it does is it makes it cheaper to run your business. Mm -hmm. So it makes it cheaper to invest in new equipment, it makes it cheaper to expand your operations, mm -hmm. or you know what, Th probably for me um, as a business owner, mm -hmm. it would have helped me um, you know, hire either more staff or pay my my current staff more. more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What makes the North Shore economy in particular unique? I would imagine a lot of waterfront industry, that sort of thing, lots going on all the time. I, I love my constituency, I love mm -hmm. my riding, because we've got a little bit of everything. We've got the residential, of course, we've got strong retail, mm -hmm. but we've got a great, great uh, waterfront industry. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I was recently at um, uh, Kinder Morgan, mm -hmm. a terminal that, um, the bulk bulk terminal, bulk mm -hmm. facility, yeah. and you know, it's amazing to hear that I think it was 13% mm -hmm. of all exports coming out of Canada, not just VC, but of Canada, mm -hmm. goes through our North Shore terminals. Really? That's a lot of export activity. Mm -hmm. um, we've got uh, Neptune bulk terminals, we've got the Saskatchewan wheat pool. Right. We've got a lot of interesting businesses on the North Shore that, mm -hmm. you know, um, create the, uh, I think, the diversification of the economy that's really healthy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we actually do have a photo from uh, that visit that you mentioned, the Kinder Morgan Wharves. Uh, what did you see as you uh, <laughs> walked around and toured and just so much activity, as you mentioned? Well, you know, I've lived on the North Shore pretty well all my life, and I've looked at those yellow piles of sulfur, <laughs> and you know, this was the first time um, that I was actually able to even touch sulfur and, and see what it was all about. Yeah. So I was really surprised to see that sulfur, that big huge pile of sulfur, and there's usually mm -hmm. two piles, the size, the sulfur is, they're little pellets. Oh, really? Um, and they're about the size of really small peas, mm -hmm. or maybe corn would yeah. be a good example. <laughs> and uh, you know, there are, um, trains that come in and um, drop off the sulfur mm -hmm. and then the ships that take the sulfur out oh. and it's, it's actually amazing there's about um, 115 odd rail cars can go through and dump up their sulfur mm -hmm. within five hours so it's a very quick turnaround oh wow so you can see that sulfur pile you know growing yeah. literally before your eyes yeah that's funny that's one of those things you always see and you always <laughs> ask right. well, what do they do with that what are, where's it going so uh, that's great that you got to uh, take a tour of that i know the economy was uh, just one of the topics that you addressed mm -hmm. uh, you and your colleagues attended a recent uh, chamber of commerce event in the community tell us a bit about that so this was the first time I've been involved with the um, MLA breakfast mm -hmm. and with my colleagues, uh, Ralph Sultan and Jane Thornthwaite. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, it was basically a question and answer. So uh, the local business community uh, attended and, um, and uh, through the host, Peter Leach, a facilitator, asked us questions. And you know, there were questions on the HST, mm -hmm. on the business tax rate for uh, the municipality. Mm -hmm. um, Questions about healthcare, education. It was mm. it was actually quite a wide variety of questions. I got the yeah. easiest question. <laughs> oh, what was that? <laughs> that, was to, that was to end it. it was <laughs> who's going to win the Stanley Cup? <laughs> oh, right. And I think we can judge from your uh, lapel pin there. Yes, that, I'm quite uh, the fan. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Go Canucks, go. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we're going to take a short break here on Constituency Report. We'll be back with MLA Naomi Yamamoto right after this. And welcome back to Constituency Report, continuing our discussion with MLA Naomi Yamamoto. She represents the riding of North Vancouver Lonsdale and also serves as our Minister of Advanced Education. Uh, turning to the topic of climate change, I hear the city of North Vancouver has really uh, partnered with the province to tackle climate change. How so? Well, you know, one of the things that I'm really proud of, I live in a building that is um, heated. 
mm -hmm. through the Lonsdale Energy Corporation, mm -hmm. which is a district energy system. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very glee, uh, green, clean um, way to heat our buildings. Mm -hmm. And uh, the um, uh, province of BC and, mm -hmm. and the federal government have um, also uh, gone together to help promote the uh, project in terms mm -hmm. of funding. Okay. The um, other uh, interesting area that um, I, I've actually yet to see um, close up in action, mm -hmm. but I do remember uh, seeing it being, the, the solar panels being um, placed in the um, new library building. Oh, wow. So the solar panels were, mm -hmm. um, I, I believe, also a joint um, funding contribution with the city of North Vancouver, mm -hmm. the province and the federal government mm -hmm. to supply um, hot water heat for the library building and oh, wow. other buildings as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I know uh, tourism is always a very important industry uh, on the North Shore and leading into to summer is the province actively promoting all the different things there are to do uh, well across BC but in particular the North Shore well you know the North Shore is home to two of, of I think um, the biggest uh, tourist attractions in the Lower Mainland, mm -hmm. and that's Capilano Suspension Bridge mm -hmm. and Grouse Mountain. Right, and right. Uh, I'm hoping that um, people will get interested in this contest that I, I just heard about. Mm -hmm. And it's um, a chance to win a $20,000 personalized BC vacation. Wow. So I think all they have to do mm -hmm. is to uh, check out the Hello BC website. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it gives you an opportunity to see some of the things that you can do in this province. Mm -hmm. I know the campaign is directed at Alberta and Ontario, mm -hmm. Washington State and California. Okay. So, you know, we're trying to open up our market to North America, but after mm -hmm. the Olympics. I mean, that was a great springboard for us and, mm -hmm. you know, for us to capitalize on the attention that we got during the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, it's an opportunity we can't miss. Mm -hmm. So many great attractions on the North Shore. You mentioned Grouse Mountain, and it's amazing how they've really uh, turned themselves into a four-season place to visit. You know, you've got your typical winter activities, mm -hmm. your skiing, your snowboarding. But in the summertime months, uh, people head up there all the same. They bring uh, their visitors to, to tour the beauty and the landscape up there. I actually think that Grouse Mountain is busier in the spring and summer. Oh, really? Um, the Grouse season. Grind. <laughs> and yet the Grouse Grind, which is not open yet. There's yeah. still a lot of snow mm -hmm. um, on the Grouse Grind, but it's a, it's a great um, Stairmaster yeah. <laughs> exercise. <laughs> Mother Nature's Stairmaster. You know who we have to thank? Um, for the, the redevelopment of Grouse Mountain is Stuart McLaughlin, mm. the uh, president of Grouse Mountain Resorts. Yeah. He has this incredible vision for tourism mm. and for um, you know what could the possibilities at Grouse Mountain could be, and mm -hmm. he's um, realized most of them, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, that Grouse grind, I know uh, a lot of people love to return again and again to try and beat their time up, but uh, I was not one of those people. <laughs> I've done it, it a few a times. It's not, it's actually, it's tough. It's I, not easy. I applaud those people that go back again and again. What are some of your favorite outdoor activities on the North Shore, though? You know what? I do. I love being outside. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that I, um, I love doing, and I'm not mm -hmm. sure when this segment is going to air, mm -hmm. but it was a year ago today okay. that I broke my leg cycling. Oh, wow. So I've actually been out of commission for a while. Mm -hmm. But prior to, to me um, breaking my leg, I was a, a huge trail runner. Mm -hmm. I was part of, I'm part of a group called the North Shore Lemmings, mm -hmm. and <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we get out into the trails, uh, the North Shore Trails, which is, I mean, it's just absolutely wonderful system mm -hmm. of trails. And, um, you know, we're, we're out there for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, mm -hmm. um, cycling. I just got back, well, not just, <laughs> it was in uh, September, a trip, a cycling trip in, in Italy. Mm -hmm. But oh, I, wow. oh, it was wonderful through the hilltop towns in Tuscany. Oh, that <laughs> sounds unreal. <laughs> and, you know, I love to fish. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, uh, I'm an avid fisher. Mm -hmm. I fly fish or I chuck gear into a river oh, or I'm wow. on the salt water. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's nothing like fishing um, yeah. on the West Coast. Yeah, it's just I incredible. Know. It's the place to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, the summer months also do, do pose a bit of a hazard in terms of the bear population. Mm -hmm. And uh, North Shore residents are always being encouraged to be more bear aware. What does that mean? Well, it means be taking responsibility for your garbage. Mm. That's what it really means. Yeah. You know, um, one of the things that we can do is only put our garbage out the morning that it's going to be collected. Mm -hmm. That's a huge thing that will help um, keep the bears away. away. Mm -hmm. um, you know, anything that's kind of smelly, stinky, mm -hmm. 
Don't put it in your garbage until the last minute. In fact, a good idea is if you've got food scraps, is to freeze it. Put it mm -hmm. in your deep freeze, okay. and then uh, that keeps the smell down, and then just put it out um, the morning of, mm -hmm. of the garbage collection. Um, you've got to be careful with your bird seed, mm, you know, right. things like that. Mm -hmm. Bears are attracted to anything like that. Yeah. So fruit it's just trees. being smart. Yes, yeah. that's <laughs> right. Pick up the, 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 the rotten fruit that have right. dro that's dropped. <laughs> right, right, absolutely. Nothing like finding a bear in your backyard to, uh, to put the fear in you. <laughs> well, I hear uh, students at Capilano University have really done a lot of uh, work and effort around uh, the fundraising uh, for Japanese uh, earthquake and tsunami relief. Tell us a bit about what they organized. You know, I was at Capilano University uh, mm. a couple of weeks ago, and they invited... Uh, the Consul General Ito, mm -hmm. he's the Consul General for Japan, right. to a, a wonderfully moving ceremony. And uh, at the ceremony, the um, staff and the students um, who had signed the Book of Condolences mm -hmm. presented it to Consul General Ito. Right. I know he was very, very touched. Mm. Um, students made cranes, uh, paper cranes, and mm -hmm. I think there's a picture of me holding the paper crane I made. Mm -hmm. But it was. Um, amazing the um, relationships that Kaplan University actually and the province of BC um, that they've made with um, Japan over the last um, you know few decades is right. been actually quite strong and the connection there was was felt um, quite strongly at the mm -hmm. uh, at the event yeah I would imagine uh, an event of this magnitude uh, must have been pretty close to your heart uh, your heart given uh, your heritage your Japanese descent what was going through your mind when you saw those images we were all seeing of the devastation there you know, I remember um, looking at my Blackberry, mm -hmm. and I was still in bed, mm -hmm. and uh, seeing all these um, uh, announcements of this earthquake. And I, I mean, er Japan has earthquakes all the time, mm -hmm. but I turned the TV on because it, it just sounded, you know, a lot worse than, than we've heard in the past, and mm -hmm. I couldn't believe the devastation. And um, my, our, my family has been in, in Canada for so long mm -hmm. that really, the only relatives I have in Japan are quite distant, mm -hmm. but we did find that they were safe mm -hmm. which was good news right. but um, you know when you see the devastation and the loss of you know entire towns mm -hmm. it's hard to imagine yeah and I guess uh, events like the one uh, that the Capilano students organized really keeps that event in focus because months after the disaster it's still important that people keep supporting the cause and, and remember those people in our thoughts and prayers you know who really um, has uh, taken an interest in um, some of the um, the devastation, the, well, the devastation in mm -hmm. Japan is Doug Copeland, the author. Mm, really? And I was following him. I follow him on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And if anybody wants to see some amazing videos that you may not have seen, you know, just on, on TV, right. um, you know, search his, his um, Twitters and mm -hmm. look at the, or tweets, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and take a look at um, some of the, the links he has for videos that people have shot in Japan. Oh, really? And they are quite incredible. Mm, yeah, I'll have to uh, check that out for sure. Uh, you have some constituents who are starting a charity to operate three schools in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Tell us about their work and what they're doing there. That would be Ililo, 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 <laughs> Ililo and Fatuma. Uh -huh. They um, are originally from the Democratic uh, Republic of Congo mm -hmm. and returned for a visit a few years ago. And they were devastated by the um, condition that um, they found the women in, in these remote mm -hmm. villages. Mm -hmm. These are women um, who have been raped. Mm -hmm. They're women who are, um, can barely, some of them barely speak. Mm -hmm. Their um, the illiteracy is, um, is rampant. They, are um, very few of them are educated mm -hmm. uh, and so what they did was using their own money mm -hmm. they have built three schools oh it cost them about eight hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. hopefully that'll go down to about five hundred once they've paid off the land right. but that takes care of um, the teachers that they have hired mm -hmm. to help educate these women to increase their literacy you know, it's something that just two people are doing right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they came to talk to me, I just thought, more people have to know about this. Mm -hmm. And thanks to the North Shore Outlook, there was a great article and apparently of oh, yeah. quite a uh, outpouring of support for them. Oh, that's terrific. Great to hear. Great work that they're doing. Uh, next month, you'll be attending a celebration tea event for the North Shore Volunteers for Seniors. And they'll be marking a very important milestone, I hear. 
they will be 50 years old. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> this is a great organization. Yeah. You know, there are, they've got about 100 volunteers that visit, you know, they have one-on-one -on -one visits with mm -hmm. um, clients, and the, and the clients of, um, of this organization are the elderly, mm -hmm. the, the, the seniors that are isolated, mm -hmm. and sometimes their only interaction with other people are these volunteers that, you know, bring them to um, the, the um, uh, facility, mm -hmm. or they just simply, you know, visit them and, and maybe give their, their um, own caregivers a bit of um, um, respite, mm -hmm. um, a respite from the um, care of these elderly people. Mm -hmm. But they are an amazing group. Yeah. You know, there's only two part-time people who work there, and they've harnessed the efforts and good mm -hmm. spirits of all these volunteers on the North Shore to help these seniors. Mm -hmm. How wonderful. Uh, you briefly touched on your involvement on Twitter and this has <laughs> been a really uh, unique social networking opportunity, hasn't it? You know, and I'm new to it. Mm -hmm. I'm quite new to it, but I'm, I mean, it's, it's to my great delight that someone actually retweets something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. No, I'm just it makes me feel so good. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's, um, it's, a, it's a also a very interesting um, exercise mm -hmm. in communicating with 140 characters or less. Mm -hmm. So it really makes you think about what you're actually going to uh, tweet. Mm -hmm. um, I, I try to tweet, make it a combination of um, public information mm -hmm. as well as just thoughts yeah. that I might have or comments or questions. Mm -hmm. And um, I've actually enjoyed, as I mentioned, um, following um, the um, tweets of, of various people, mm -hmm. one of them being Doug Copeland. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, the province and all sorts of other um, media outlets um, tweet continuously, mm -hmm. the Canucks. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's just another way of receiving information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think people really enjoy uh, being able to hear from their MLA, even get a little bit of a sense of their personality. It's a, just a new way for them to connect with government, isn't it? Well, when I yeah. go out on the trails, mm -hmm. I, I often will tweet that I'm on the Baden-Powell or, you know, mm -hmm. on the old buck. Um, yeah. And I think it just, it, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. um, it gives people an idea that you actually do more than just go mm -hmm. to Victoria or sit in your constituency office. Exactly. <laughs> you enjoy all those great features of your riding, North Vancouver, Lonsdale. Or if you find something good to eat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you can follow MLA Naomi Yamamoto on Twitter. Her handle is at Naomi Yamamoto. Very easy to remember. You can also check out her website if you'd like more information about all of the topics we've discussed today, www.naomiyamamotomla.bc.ca. My thanks to Naomi Yamamoto, Thank MLA you. for North Vancouver Lonsdale, Minister of Advanced Education, and join us next time for Constituency Report.